Come on in, folks. Grab a seat. Grab a seat. Grab a seat. Y'all know the deal. Side your watch parties. Call your mammy and them. Y'all already know. Pop, you here? Grandma, you here? Come on. We know you cooking Easter dinner. Have a seat for a second, though. We're going to talk about something real quick. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday. We don't own these rights. This is... Pastor James Hillian, he from the DMV. This has put me back together again because we're going to have a conversation today, a good conversation. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, folks. Happy Sunday to you guys. Yes, we got you here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, amen. Happy Resurrection Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you that don't know, I'm T. Pearson, and I'm here from the T. Pearson Experience. But I'm also here because I'm a Coco mom, okay? For those of you that don't know, Coco Life That Black, get over there. We are creating a community around the disparities in black maternal health, okay? So go on over there. But I'm a mom today because I'm having a conversation with Mom D today. We're going to have a good conversation, and we're going to need you guys' input. We're going to need you guys' prayers. We're going to need you guys' support because we're a pusher today. OK, she came to me so that I could make sure I can push her a little bit um, further in her healing journey. So we are welcoming you all into this healing space. So drop those encouraging words to her throughout the show. You know, text her after the show. Go love up on her after the show. Today is Resurrection Sunday, and I'm going to try to help resurrect her soul a little bit today, ladies and gentlemen, as she is on this healing journey. So without further ado, let me bring her on. And you guys welcome my sister, my good sis. What's up, What's sis? How you doing, baby? What's up, sis? How you doing? How you doing? First, I want to tell everybody happy God Day, because this is his Amen. day. Um, Amen. You know, I appreciate all that's tuning in. And I'm ready, you know. And just make sure, you know, you whatever he presents to you and give you, you run with it because that's his purpose of you. Okay. I, I I'm here. I'm here. Hey, that's my that's my baby's uh ringtone, you know. God, appreciate it. We're gonna have this conversation, sis. Hey, it's okay. You ready? Most you ready? Definitely. Most definitely. Okay. So let's get right into it. So, um, why was it important for you to talk to me today? I want I want to start with that very easy question. Um to be honest, you know, it, sometimes with things in life, it takes a person that don't know you to talk to you or just ask questions. Okay. They don't know a lot about you. You know what I'm saying? When a person that know a lot about you, it's, it's more easier. Not saying nothing in a bad way. It's just sometimes yeah. when you do stuff like this, it, it takes for a person that don't really know you because it gives them wondering questions to ask and to want to know. Yeah, and I and I got a lot of them. Yeah. I got a lot. Of them. <laughs> so um, we, I know that this show was Damien's dream, right? Because that's kind of what we talked about earlier on when you was kind of in the planning process. And we know that this is something he dreamed for. So why was it important for you to take his dream and like bring it to fruition? You got the banners, you got the platform, you got the you know the family and friends. Why was this important for you to carry this dream on? When you are blessed with a gift, um, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we hear you. 
Um, when you're blessed with a gift from God, you have to really enjoy it and uh, appreciate it because a gift is only temporarily, you know, there's not, it's all, it's never nothing eternal until you leave here. Um, mm -hmm. He was an amazing kid. You know, he didn't give me no issues, you know, typical teen though, you know, he had probably not go to school or whatever or whatever, but I wouldn't know. Cause he knew not, <laughs> you know, he knew right, he was like, right. well, I'm going to go Katie Kaboom. Um, right. But when you have a, a kid like that, it's just any kid. Every kid that you birth is an angel, honestly, in the gift yeah. from God. It's up to yeah. you as a parent to really appreciate what gift God gives you to, um, you know, nurture and um, to appreciate. Because, again, you know, that's the best gift over money, cars, houses, anything. You know, I don't, that, that stuff don't mean nothing. You know, when you have something yeah. come out your wound or you, you create, um, it's, a, it's a blessing and a gift. So my and, job, as the reason why I did it is because this was his dream and journey, and um, I'm 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 going to keep keep it going. Hey, shout out to you! I received that, sis. And listen, you jumped in head feet head first into a uh, industry you didn't know too much about, but you are doing fantastic. The lineups has been wonderful. The conversations have been wonderful, and so I believe that Damien is very proud of you know what you have. So far, I'm gonna say so far because we know it's a whole list of things. Oh, it's about to get dope. It's about to get even right. Better. His birthday coming up, so we know the turn up gonna be real. Okay. Thing gonna be um, but that brought me to my next question, right? So when you found out that you were pregnant, um, you know what was your thoughts? What was like, you like? Oh my gosh, I'm a, a person into yeah. this. World. And then oh, to answer that piece, what did you feel when you found out it was gonna be a boy? I'm glad you asked that. Hey, Pop, I hope you're watching this right now because you know <laughs> I'm about to tell the story, Pop. That's right. Let's go. You you know, I was supposed to play an extra year. I mean, I was supposed, I was getting a physical for uh, high school, play ball, mm -hmm. of course, at Parkdale, y'all, Parkdale High School um, for the next season. And uh, when my doctor came back and told me that uh, I wasn't going to be able to play, I'm like, well, why not? But <laughs> he came back and said, uh, Miss Mason, you are uh, six months pregnant. I'm like, Wait six months? Six months? Six months, yeah. Oh, wow. Six months. Oh, so wow. I was like, okay, I can take that hit because I could play an extra year. Um, mm -hmm. When I found out, I called my pop, you know, and I said, hey, pop, you sitting down? He said, hey, yeah, yeah, baby girl, I'm sitting down. I'm sitting down. I said, okay, good. <laughs> I want you to sit down. Right, said, right. Well, I'm not going to be playing basketball this year because uh, I'm, I'm having a baby. He was quiet for a second. But then as soon as I said, it's a boy, he was like, oh, okay, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, okay. And, you know, from there, my dad and my mom, you know, and my family, you know, they, they just was everything when Damien was born. Like I said, I couldn't have kids. I was born premature. So mm. Damien was my gift from God. And and that's probably why I, I understand what the situation is and what how life is set. You know, yeah. in order you, for you to understand a lot of things, you have to understand a man. So you can't yeah. have a question. Hey, that is hey. good. So when so okay, so you found out she was pregnant six months in. So now you're like, dang, I can just play ball an extra year. That's cool. That's da da da. So then let's fast forward. You got this baby boy in your hands. When you look down at him for the first time, what did your heart and your mind say? I create we, we not I. I'm gonna say we created that. We created wow. that. Not wow. that. But that gift, you know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. again, you know, I, I wasn't expecting to have kids. I was, I was, I was probably, I was feeling like I was one of the ones that you can, you know, go out here, enjoy life, pop, 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 and you know, and I had no kids, right. but right. he came right. along. Uh, what's up, kid? We got, we got big Gooch in the building too. Good morning, folks. What's up, Rob, Rob? Morning. What's up baby? What's up, yes, baby? Yes, yes, Um, so listen, in the plight of where we are today in society, right? So, um, there's a lot of um, boy moms, you know, kind of moving around the nation, right? There's a whole bunch of boys, right? So as a boy mom, did you have any fear of, you know, where the threat is now? 
right? Like black men are being hunted, right? And oh, not to say it's just new, that has been going on forever, right? So when you looked at your bundle of joy, you're like, wow, we created this. You know, he's going to be amazing. He's God's gift to me. You know, were there any, um, what fears did you have about raising a black boy in today's society? Well, a black boy turned man yeah. at that point. So, um, with that, what I could say is one, he was a black male. Um, mm -hmm. I just refused to uh, allow him to see that um, that he didn't have to go out in the street and hustle and um, do what he needs. Because, you know, some of these young black men, you know, I'm not knocking it, you know, when they see their mother struggle, they go, they figure they got to go out here and hustle and stuff to help their mother. Right. You know, I'm not, I'm saying, I'm not saying it's something you should do, but especially if it's a young black male that has that attachment to their mother, mm -hmm. you know, they see their mother struggle, so they want to help their mother. So right. um, I just refuse to allow my son to um, have that, you know, whatever he needed. Whatever he wanted, I was on. I was on it, you know, because that was my only and my gift. So I knew what I needed right. to do as a mom, you know. And, I, and anybody, you know, anybody that's a mom that have their sons out here, go on little dates with them, you know. That's what we yeah. always did. Even if it don't got to be no fancy restaurant. Me and Demi went to like Popeyes, you know, and sat down. And, and it was about the time. Yeah, time is everything, you know. Um, if you don't get the time. Because it's never you, you can never make that up. So I hmm. always think it as let me get what I can get because he's getting older, you know. Yeah. Um, he's gonna eventually wanna, you know, grow up and go do his own thing. So right. um we had the same habits though. He liked to shop, you know. You know, he <laughs> they were like, Mom, what you done? I'm like, What do you want? We're going to the mall. You know, we we had the shoe fetish, the shopping fetish, and you know, he was just one of them. Well, he was just one of them kids that I didn't have no no worries with. Um, mm. He knew how to keep a job. He knew his hustle, and I always told him his faith is everything. Your faith will show you the truth before a blind uh, before you um before a sheep blinds you. You know, mm. um, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Let me hold on. Let me write that down. We gotta you capture that. that one. Hey Trey, Trey, you know that's our mark, man. You remember that? Did you say your faith is what? Your faith is your truth, but a sheep will blind you. Mm -mm. Um, you know, he just, he, he was just one of them kids that I could give the world to because again, he was a typical team, but he didn't give me that, that headache, that issue. Or mm -hmm. that, I mean, our relationship was like Bonnie and Clyde and he, he, he just was amazing. You know, he, I, I always told him your faith will show you the truth and to treat others how you want to be treated. And I said, even if a person didn't have nothing. If you have it, you give it because mm. you're doing someone else, uh, uh, not even a favor. You're helping someone else. So, <laughs> Goop said you got that out of culture cookie. <laughs> now, okay. Hey, look, I got that drink from the carrier around Kentland. What's that drink called? Is it China or something? Or no, matter of <laughs> fact, I take that back. Kentland ain't going to get that. Not, nothing against Kentland, but I'm going to take it back to the pole. The pole back down at the end of many. China yeah, wall, right? That's that in a mini, uh, that in a mini fortune cookie, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and I want to just say, listen, I don't, I don't watched over the years of y'all balling out at the ball, and Damien always stayed fresh. Okay, he, uh, I think my funniest video is the one that you guys reposted of him out there in his grandma yard and his nice old Yeezys, baby. And he was, <laughs> he was tiptoeing through that dag on yard, and he was like, I'm gonna have to come back later. I was like, I. I know damn right he gonna come back another time because that ain't gonna work. You know um, go ahead. What you say, Gooch Paws in the wall? What's that? That one down there? <laughs> <laughs> Don't play no games. What's up, V? Good morning. Thank y'all for joining our conversation, man. Uh, for those of you that just joined, I'm T Paris and I'm on here with Mondi. This is the Quincy McCall show. I'm here as a old mom today, though, because we are having a conversation. Mondi pulled me in and asked me to have a conversation with her about what we got going on, the Quincy McCall show about Damien. Um, and so we starting simple, but I'm out to push her a little bit. So we're going to need you guys to drop these comments and give her all this extra support because she's been real vulnerable this morning. She's, she's uh, agreed to be transparent on some things. And so that's not an easy thing, sis, because I've done my healing journey very publicly. 
Um, and so I applaud your bravery um, of doing this and then allowing my goofy ass to be the one to do it. So I, I thank you, sis. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, well, good morning, V. Good morning. So that brings me to my next thing, right? And so you talked about how, you know, you guys would do these dates, how you guys would just, you know, edit, like have this mom, um, son time. And so when you think back now, do you think that that was kind of God preparing you for the separation, for his transition, that, you know, you guys were able to kind of get all of this extra time in with each other? Uh, um, I wasn't expecting uh, that, but okay. he, did, he did tell me. I did know. Okay. Um, you know, he was very private, you know, he. Good morning, Pop. Hey, what's up, Via? Um, he was very private. You know, he cared about a lot of people's feelings and, and what they had going on. He didn't want no one to, uh, you know, stop um, their life on his accountability of what he was going through. And, I, you know, for me as a mom, you know, that's a man move. You know, that's a man move and um, I, I respect him for it. And I'm I'm not saying that a lot of people um, agree with me, but um, he cared about their feelings. He didn't, you know, he wanted them to enjoy themselves. Mm -hmm. um, what time and what he presented to them, I know it was valuable to them. Um, it may not have been fair because, you know, if I would have told my family that he was sick, um, everybody would have probably dropped uh, drop what they were doing from from off the break to want to spend more time with him. But um, he just he just he just wanted everybody to continue to live their life and, and to enjoy. And you know he wasn't selfish to me. He was a man. But like I said, some people may not look at it like that. But uh, you know he cared about people's feelings more than anything. Mm -hmm. And you know sometimes that's kind of the biggest thing, right? Because we get become so selfless. Right. And so sometimes in that selfless movement, we do what we feel is best for everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of put ourselves on the back burner. I'm one of those people that I put myself on the back burner to make sure everybody else is OK first. Right. And as a mom, we have just this added responsibility. Right. To kind of put ourselves aside and then just kind of hone in on our children, particularly if you have a child that's sick. Um, and it, it could be from, you know, grave illness or just like a child with a toothache or a ear ache in the middle of the night. As a mom, you lose sleep. You know, you're like, damn, I got to get up and be to work at five o'clock. But you don't sleep at night because you are rotating that Tylenol and that Motrin every three to four hours. Right. Because that's that extra strength that we have. And so when you found out that Damien was ill when he was sick, were there any things that immediately popped up in your head that you wanted to? sure you told him before he transitioned completely what are three things that you definitely wanted to make sure you either said to him you did with him or you um yeah those two things anything that you um you know, when i found out i love him and i got him and i understand those three things right there okay um you know again you can't never uh question a man upstairs um, he's the only one that's going to know your dash date. Um, right. Just plain right. And we, we, we don't know ours. He's mm -hmm. the only one that knows it. So I got it. I understood it. And, you know, by me being his mother, you know, I was able to enjoy a lot of things with him, all his birthdays, Christmas, you know, so it was hard, but he prepared me and then, and God prepared me. So I, I was able to, you know, I have my good days and my bad days, but I understand right. because, again, you can never question a man upstairs. Mm -hmm. so. Um, and I and I dig and I and I appreciate that answer. But sis, I'm gonna push you. I'm gonna push you a little bit because um, that was the nice churchy answer, right? That you know God gave them to you and God can take them away and God knows the dash date. God knows your life before it was planned. Like we know the Bible, right? So we got. Mm -hmm. But I'm asking you now, as a mom. Right. So as a mom, knowing that your son is going to transition away from the physical being. And you don't know what time. Right. At that, when you found out he was sick, like, I don't know the time frame and I don't. That's not important to this question. But when you found out he was ill, something in your heart would have had to break as a mom, because now you know that 
the time his dash is approaching, right? And so at that moment, as a mom, sis, I'm asking you, what are the three things you wanted to make sure you relate to your son who you held in his in your arms and you said, God gave me, right? I created this. He allowed me to create this. So now you went from here to having to be by his bedside because I saw the picture of you and Pop next to him in the bedside. So uh, while you were at his bedside, what was your brain telling you that you feel like you needed to share with your son before you couldn't share anything else? Um, you know, he asked me to rub his stomach. You know, he was a little cranky, you know. He was mm -hmm. a little cranky, but I get it because when you're sick, you're cranky. Um, you know, I did everything he asked me to do. You know, he he always, he was, you know, good on, he wanted to make sure his, his mouth was good. You know, he said, Ma, can you, uh, can you brush my teeth? Can you, mm -hmm. you know, rinse it out with mouthwash? And my dad, you know, he did his part with the little stuff to make sure everything was out of his teeth. And he'll look at me and be like, how my teeth look, Ma? And I'm like, they right. wibble, because of course, Mommy did them. You know, I'm going to make sure your teeth is fly, you know? Mm -hmm. Um he he looked at me and uh mm -hmm. he had a tear and i told him i said it's okay i get it i understand you know um it's okay you know my mom already came to see him so you know they already say when a rel relative come to see him it's time yeah and um i i just i'm i'm just was grateful that i was able to see him due to covid you know yeah it's sad it was on you know for his last little bit of days, but I was glad I was able to, you know, see him before he said his goodbye. Amen and, to that. And I'm glad my dad was. I wish a lot of other people were able to, you know, I'm, I'm sure it had been a rack of people that wanted to say goodbye to him. But um, yeah. the main thing I think he was worried about the most was my feelings. And as a mother, yeah. that's not as taking it away from his grandmother, his aunt, his uncles and stuff like that. I was his queen. So, you know, yeah. he wanted to make sure that my feelings and my heart was secure before he left. Not saying over anyone else, though. Not saying it like that. But um, our relationship was, like, unbreakable, you know? Unbreakable. Yeah. Anybody that know uh, me and my son relationship and just us as an individual knew that was unbreakable. And for your next question, um, uh. And before you go into that, I wanted to read just some of this encouragement that we have coming in. He has said, you're so courageous to turn this pain into power. She also says that she's sorry for this pain that you're processing through. And we're going to talk about processing through and pushing through in a second. She says, we are here with you, Mondi. I have a five-year-old little boy, and I can't imagine how deeply, I can imagine how deeply this impacts you one day at a time. Rob says, keep your head up, dig. You dig. You dig. You know? Pop Mason, Diggle Pop. Pop says, I love hey, your brain. Yay! What's up, Daddy? Yay, Daddy. Um, yes, we got Alan. We got Pop Pop on too, you know, so good morning as well. Um, but Rob also had another question for you. He says, could Damien beat you one-on-one? -on -one? Man, you know, Rob, I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> hey, you know what? Damien liked basketball, but he was just one of them pretty boy Rickies. You know, he liked to stay fresh and smile and smell good. Um, he we shot around a couple of times. I took him to the court, but at the end of the day, I will bust my son's ass. I'm gonna say it like, <laughs> Sorry, guys. you know, but I'm gonna say it. I will bust his butt. But um, yeah, he 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 had a nice little jumper, a nice little jumper. So, and and another question though, right? So was so. I have a girl, right? And so it's, we got to this point where we wear the same size shoe, right? Um, which means my shoes are no longer my shoes, they're our shoes. Right. Did, was there ever a point where you and Damien was matched up with size and like, you know, he would borrow yours, you would borrow his, or y'all just went and bought two pairs? Oh, so like, yeah, when he was a little kid, I love when he was in the size six and a half, seven, uh, you know, that size, because I just pass on my shoes and I ain't had to go out and buy nothing. I, you know, <laughs> oh, good. I made sure he had his old Navy and a fresh haircut. That, that was, that's pretty that's much it. it. Old Navy was the joint back in the day for the kids. Y'all know that. That's it. Uh, v says your resilience is admirable. And I definitely agree with this because you, we processing through, sis. And so let me just say a little bit about processing and pushing. 
So for me, I used to process, I was pushed through, right? And so when you push through and you think about like a snow plow, when a snow plow comes down the street, it pushes the snow onto the side, but it does it kind of like that, right? And so what happens when that snow melts? It causes all of this flooding. It causes all of this mess. And so when I looked at my healing journey and I was like, damn, T, you've been pr- pushing through because that's what I'm about. Push through, you know, push through the pain, push through the BS, push through everything. But when you push things, you push it to the side. And so my new way of thinking has been to process through. And I'm glad Kia said that. So the processing through is taking all of that shit chunk by chunk and figuring out what I'm going to do with it. And so within you processing through, right, because I'm, well, you've been pushing through. I'm going to be real honest with you, sis. You've been pushing through. You've been pushing shit to the side because you and I have had these conversations. So today I applaud you for the starting of the processing period, because this is what we're going to do to get to this healing. And so Pop said, yeah, um, he was Damien wasn't a basketball player. That's Pop. No. Like I said, he was pretty rich. You know, he wanted to have a nice thank you, Pop. The nice, the nice shirts and the smile. You know, he already had my smile, but he, you know, he just wanted, he was just one of them kids that he liked to look nice. He liked to work That's hard it. That's it. and like to help others. That was him. Yeah. And I applaud you of raising such a respectable young black man. You hear me? You and your village. You know, I, I know he was a village baby. Um, and so I, I, I have a question actually about the village too. But when Damien passed away, did he, when was the first, first question, when he passed away, did he ever come to you in your dreams? <laughs> Let me speak about that. Yes, he did. Okay. So the first time he came to you, what was that like? Man, it was a long line full of people for COVID tests. <laughs> I was like, what does this mean? <laughs> I ain't joking. And then the Uh-oh, next- oh I think you're freezing. I said, uh, can you see me? Am I unfreezing? All right, we back. Go ahead. All right. Nah, that, that one was wild. It was a long line full of people for COVID tests. I said, okay, you trying to tell me something? Um, The second dream... I haven't really, I, you know, I rarely dream, but the recent one I'm going to tell you about, you okay. know, day before yesterday, um, we had just had his birthday party. We had a pool party and uh, there was a couple of people in that dream. I'm not going to put their names out there, but it was a couple of people. Um, mm-hmm. I had dropped, I had jumped in the pool and my phone got wet. So I had told him, I said, hey, take mommy's phone and put it on the towel, but I can never see him. I can hear his voice. Um, mm-hmm. And um, he did. And I was like, the party was over and everything. I'm fast forwarding because it's, it's a dream. Mm-hmm. Um, I called his phone and I was like, hello? She said, officer such and such. And I was like, uh, yeah, I'm trying to reach my son, Damien. She was like, oh yeah, he got locked up for selling drugs. I said, what? Selling drugs? I was like, mm. I said, well, who was he with and where was he at? Come to find out, he was with his dad at his dad's house. So I was like, oh, "Man, wow. you messing with me? You're messing with me this morning." But I woke up because it was a, it was something to smile about, you know. Um, it could be a message for one of his, one of his friends, you know. I don't know, but I thought it was just kind of funny though. I was like, "George," I said, Nick, "Damien never was selling no drugs and nothing like that." And if he did, he was a quiet one though. If he did. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't, you know, I rarely dream about him. I could feel him around me. I can always feel him around me when I drive or I'm in the house. Um, Yeah, he, you know, I think he knows that I'm okay. So when I'm in a space, if he ever feels or see me in a space where I'm broken, um, I think he will come more often. And and, And that's understandable. Okay, good. So um, thank you. Thank you for sharing that dream with us. Um, processing through is a hard thing, right? And we feel like we don't need anybody. Sometimes we, we just feel like we can handle the grieving process on our own or not grieve, right? And so how has your village supported you during this time? Um... I'm going to say first and foremost, my family too. My family, 
um, you know, my grandmother. My grandmother, you know, I talk to her every day. That keeps me going. Um, mm -hmm. My father, Pop, mm -hmm. and my stepmom, Miss Alice. You know, I call everybody in my family. I'm the one that calls everybody. Nobody mm -hmm. really calls me, but I call everybody, which is cool because that's my purpose. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I got a great family support. Um, Siobhan, you know, she's been there through a lot uh, as well. Um, my sister, Nicole, my brother-in-law, Mark, Kiki. You know, pretty much my family has always been support. Damien's grandmother, you know, I talk to her every day. Um, my baby father here, make sure, you know, Damien told him to make sure I was um, okay. You know, make sure mom, you know, you, you be there for mom. Uh, and he has done his part since Damien has passed. Um, and I appreciate that as well. You know, anything coming from family and friends, I appreciate it. And of course, you know, my basketball crew. Tanya, yeah. I know who the basketball crew is. Um, they've been amazing, you know. Um, we're the type of people you don't have to check up on a person every day because we can always pick it up like an open book, pick up and read from off of that from the, from where we left off. Um, my coworkers, I got to give my coworkers a shout out. I got some amazing coworkers at my job. Um, it's Tammy, uh, Alicia. Sharita, um, Ms. Teresa, Miss Ross, just a couple of people I can name, but um, you know, I got amazing support at work too. Frank, um, mm -hmm. it's about support, and you know, I try to surround myself around that because um, without support, is nothing, you know, right? Um, <clears throat> so that that was cute. <laughs> that was a real that, that was a real cute answer. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you keep saying your little cute answers, but then I'm gonna push your ass on them. So um thank you to the village for helping support her. Okay. Oh, I gotta shout out my grandmother though. G Ma, mm -hmm. you know you the girl though. You know you the girl. Mm-hmm. And your girlfriend. Oh yeah, I gave her her shout out. She she's been there through. Oh, okay. You know, I, I <laughs> Siobhan, you know she she I, I gave we her. Got her the, we got island. We got ba we got a village. Oh right? yeah, so, baby father, you know, the whole he thing. He do his thing. Mm hmm. We're gonna applaud the whole village. Um. So is do you feel like the village has been enabling you with your with your blockage for your healing journey? Um. You know some things and uh. In life, you know, you got to open your eyes up to see. Um, mm. A lot of people have intentions and some people have, um, how can I, I ain't even going to put it in a way, you know, if you don't open your eyes and see what, what your, uh, your flaws are, um, mm -hmm. you know, you would, you would never get it. You know, I, every, we all have flaws, you know, I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I have a smart mouth. I'm going to say what I'm going to say, but uh, it's a time and a place for all that. And, you know, if people would actually um, sit back and look at how they are as an individual and in their character, it'll help a lot of things um, within themselves and just life. You know, it's not yeah. about blaming someone for this or blaming someone sure. for that. You know, again, we all have flaws and uh, we're yeah. not perfect. And some people feel like they're perfect. and I'm I'm not the type of person that's going to tell you what's wrong or what's right. Um, yeah. uh, it's up to you to see it. I can say it, but, uh, you know, we all don't, we all get said, said that too. Um, but it takes time to, for a person to address their flaws. You know, everything don't happen overnight. Uh, mm -hmm. Just because it's a year, you know, it don't mean that it's going to happen. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. You know, I'm right. just like this. If you care about someone or if you're married to someone or you love someone or whatever the situation is, um, you work with that person. Because, again, um, everything's not set in stone to be perfect within a relationship or just uh, friendship or nothing in life. Right. Um, that's where the, the true value of uh, friendship and relationship or just anything dealing with a ship uh, come into um, play. Absolutely. And also, even with that piece, right, it comes to piece of being um, honest with ourselves and honest with each other about what support looks like. And so I have about two more questions and then we're going to wrap up. Awesome. But what what does healing look like for you? So um, at, and, and let me back up and say that I need for you to speak about yourself. 
I don't want to hear about how it looks for the area from your pop pop and from grandma. No, Deneen, what does healing look like to you as you are on this healing journey of grief, as you are on this healing journey of transformation, as you are on this healing journey of resurrection, right? This is Resurrection Sunday. And we know that this is the day that God rose from the grave, right? Mm -hmm. And how, how symbolic, right? That we are having this conversation about you coming out of your shell and doing something new because this is completely new for you to be this vulnerable and this transparent. So I received that and I appreciate you. So um, with that movement, what does this healing journey look like for you? What do you want to be six months from now, 12 months from now, you will be, a, you're still adjusting, right? Of being just a mom who has an angel baby at this point. What does this healing look like for you, sis? What does this journey look like for you? Pick up where he left off, purpose. Okay. That's it, purpose. You know, there's nothing else to it. It's just purpose and um, what he would have did if he was here. That's wow. It. Okay. I received that. I received that, all of it. <laughs> um, last question. Why today? Um, Why you know, today? Honestly, I forgot today was Easter. You know, I don't really keep a track of uh, the Sundays. I try to do the shows in between. Um mm -hmm. I know I didn't do one last Sunday, so I said I got to do one this Sunday, but uh, I'm glad I did. You know, it's God's day. Um, I hope this uh, show was very uh, productive and understanding to a lot of people. Um, it was just I didn't do one last Sunday, and um, this Sunday it was just happened to be, you know, God's day. So I appreciate it, though, because... Um, it's not. It's nothing like giving up um, good, wise, and work, uh, good wisdom and words to uh, mm -hmm. anyone. You know, we all need it coming from whatever direction, and it just got to be genuine. You know, um, mm -hmm. some people wise, uh, some words ain't genuine, so you have to pick and choose on those words. You know, as well. Mm -hmm. And thank you. Um, one last question. What does what can we do and we be in this village, right? What can we do to help continue to support you as a grieving mother, but also as a mother that is driven by her son's passion and your son's purpose? And so his purpose became your purpose. I heard you say that. So what does support look like? How, how can we support you personally and on this just journey of the Quincy McCall show? Um, pretty much you know, just tune in, you know, this show's about my son. It's never about me. Um, you know, this is something I didn't sign up for. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not saying it in that way, but now that I have to do it, it's, it's my purpose and a reason, um, to do my son's show. Um, it's an amazing journey. I appreciate him, you know, giving me this journey to do, um, I like it, you know, it's kind of hard because, you know, you have to talk about so many different things um, and just keep people tuned in. And the ones that do tune in again, I appreciate it. You know, you don't have to stop what you're doing on a Sunday to uh, watch the show. And I appreciate you guys. And on the other part of the question, um, it just keeps me going, you know, uh, uh, I want to include so many people in, and then people that have done the show, you know, I appreciate it because, um, you know, you take your time out to show my son love for his dream. And, uh, you don't get too many people like that. You know, this is just a podcast show. I, I, it eventually it'll get better. You know, I believe it. Um, you know, my job is, as a mom is to allow people to speak and, um, tell their story. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that because everybody has a story to tell um, a part about life and just in general. Um, I just want people to really like take this show and love on your family like he did. Um, you don't have to be like him, but just love on your family and 
regardless of what's going on with your family or your friend, um, you know, be the best, you know, as a friend. Um, I got to do a little bit more better on certain things too. Um, and I will, but life is short. Um, whatever grudges you have, whatever animosity, leave that alone, you know, this person or that person can be gone tomorrow and you're going to wish you should have, could have. Um, and those things you can't take back because it already happened and you didn't get a chance to say some things to people that you wanted to say to. So in life, I just hope this show keeps a lot of positive and help a lot of people mentally, physically, spiritually, you know, all the way across the board, you know, we all have issues, we all have flaws and that's just pretty much it. You know, I just want people to take this and pass it on down to the next person. The more we pass down, the better I feel that uh, his purpose and uh, anything in life can change. Amen to that, sis. Um, I applaud you. <laughs> I thank everybody that tuned in today. Um, this was a difficult conversation, sis, and we made it through. Oh, hopefully, yeah. this, hopefully this will have you speaking things out that you can put into your brain. Start this processing and not pushing. We're not going to push no more shit, sis, and I'm with you. And you know, I'm going to hold your feet to the fire because it's important that you process so that you don't break at some point. Mm -hmm. I know from personal experience of holding stuff in and not processing and pushing, 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 a push pal comes back. And then you are faced with so much at one time when we can just process it little by little. It's not going to be an easy road, sis, but it's going to be a meaningful one and a necessary one. Is you are you agreeing to be on this ride with me? Oh, yeah, yeah, I agree with you, but you also got to be very mindful and strong minded, though, to to uh, understand your journey. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. And your journey is your journey, and your walk is yours. And God gave you your own walk to have. And I, I'm glad that you are welcoming me into it. And happy Resurrection Sunday, y'all. Post some of them places. Y'all grandmothers cooking, grandma cooking dinner. So I'm about to roam <laughs> down. The Landover and get some of that good old Easter dinner because I don't cook. But for those of you that are in the kitchen, y'all have been basing y'all chickens and turkeys and all that stuff, shout out to you. For those of you that's going to go and eat out today, shout out to you. For those that's finding them Easter eggs, wipe them off because it's still Corona. All right. But I'm T. Person of the T. Person Experience. I'm grateful for being here. Also, a Coco Mom from Coco Life got back. And sis, I thank you. I thank the Quincy McCall Show. Gonna take us out. Damn, you're gonna take us out and we're gonna party. You hear me? So don't go nowhere, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go nowhere. But I also want to challenge you all that listen. Bond D told you how you could support her, how you could support this mission. And so that is a challenge to all of us to uphold and hold our village members accountable for things that they want to have. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and let this. Can't hear it. Live in the building. You are appreciative, sis. Most definitely, baby. Thank, thank you, you thank you, thank you. <laughs> We know you ain't kick them out. We ain't, you ain't kick them out. Is that better? Can still hear it. Wherever you have the mic at, put the uh, song at. It's all good, baby. Because I was his dear mama always. Right. I love you, sis. I'm out. Peace, love, and head grease to you. See Peace, you guys in two weeks. Out. <laughs>